This is the fifth in the uh, series of oversight uh, and accountability hearings that we are conducting, as promised, in full committee. And uh, at least three, uh, I think four, uh, other hearings held by various subcommittees on the progress uh, and uh, work of the Recovery Act portions that are under the jurisdiction of this committee. As we will see in the course of this morning's presentation, there are 7,900 highway and transit projects underway, have broken ground, have people working, thousands, hundreds of thousands of workers off the unemployment rolls onto the payrolls and paying taxes and paying their mortgages and getting their health insurance reinstated and sending their kids to school. And as I said in a burst of enthusiasm at a groundbreaking project in New Mexico, these are the good jobs with the good wages in the society that enable the, the workers to uh, pay the mortgage, send the kids to school, put food on the table, and buy the snowmobiles. And there's a silence in the crowd. I said, oh, I guess you're not into snowmobiles out here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Sorry, I got carried away. <laughs> How about ATVs? We use those too in Minnesota. Today there is a new feature of our report, a compilation that I've been anxiously awaiting. Roads and, and miles of roads and numbers of bridges. Nationally, new construction, pavement improvement, improvements, pavement widening, traffic safety management, and the transportation enhancements have added up to 27,756.6 miles of road improvement. That's more than all the states do in any given year, in 11 months. 1,272 bridge improvements, bridge replacements, new bridge construction. Uh, in addition, of the 11,746 highway and bridge contractors in the U.S., 87% are small businesses. They have less than 50 em employees. 93% less than 100. Only 1.6% 1 have 250 or more employees. That's 187 firms. So you have 11,000 contractors that have less than, than 100, that have 100 or less than 100 employees. And they are underway with this stimulus program as well. Now, beyond those funds that we will hear about today, beyond the Recovery Act, uh, AASHTO, Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials, and the American Public Transit Association uh, have identified $62 billion of projects that are ready to go to construction within the next four or five months. That the projects they can have under contract and underway because of the streamlining, because of, of moving these projects faster than ever before, because uh, they, they know how the process works now, and, uh, and, and they are ready to go with phase two stimulus. Now, I scheduled this as the other hearings to uh, receive uh, input from federal, state, and local transportation personnel who are on the front lines in, in implementing the programs that we've authorized on the Recovery Act. Today we're also going to hear from supply chain uh, sector leader whose company has been able to keep workers employed because of these recovery dollars. You don't just build a highway, you need the sand and gravel, you need the asphalt, you need the cement that 
is made into, uh, is folded into make ready mix. And you need rebar and uh, I-beams and you need fencing and fence posts and you need all of that. And all those create jobs as well. Now, I don't know about the rest of stimulus. I speak not for the tax cut that went out. I speak not for uh, the broadband and the internet and all the rest of those things. I know what we're accounting for. And there are real jobs, real people at work, payrolls being met, people taken off unemployment compensation, people getting their health insurance reinstated case of those uh, operating engineers who typically have a contract that requires 1,200 hours of work, they're getting their 1,200 hours, they're getting their health insurance reinstated, they're paying their mortgages, they're staying in their homes, they're sending their kids to summer camp and to school. Uh, 10,329 highway and transit projects are out to bid, totaling $24.5 billion, 71% of the available formula funds. 8,871 highway and transit projects, $20.2 billion, 59% of the available are under contract. And work has begun on 7,886 projects. These uh, graphs uh, show the results. And when you add up what we're, we're, what we're reporting on today as, uh, as, as of uh, November 1st, we have payroll expenditures of $1.1 billion, $179 million in unemployment compensation checks avoided, and $230 million paid in direct federal taxes. When you add up also the supply chain and uh, the steel, the sand and gravel, as I said a moment ago, and asphalt, and manufactured equipment, new buses, and those who are building D4 cats and, and, uh, uh, and, and front end loaders and, and, uh, and uh, the rest of the heavy and highway construction equipment, that's 630,000 jobs. Nearly 1,300 bridge improvements. 28,000 miles nearly of highway improvements. When you add in the Clean Water Act, the, the, the GSA with its federal building responsibilities, when you add in the work the Corps of Engineers is doing, the shipyards under uh, MARAD, uh, the Coast Guard uh, bridge replacements that uh, have been completed, that's another uh, 14,564 projects uh, under our committee jurisdiction, totaling $44.7 billion, 70% of the funds as of November 20. In addition, state and, uh, and uh, other uh, agencies have obligated $37.8 billion. So we are seeing work underway, people at work, jobs created, uh, and remember that in December 2007, there were 780,000 construction workers nationwide out of a job sitting on the bench. And Mr. Schuster and, and I, my good friend, uh, his portrait is back there on the wall, uh, moved the T21 bill. We uh, created a special account <clears throat> of, 20, of $10 million for training of, uh, of uh, apprentices in the construction trades, knowing that there's going to be a surge of jobs. In the five years, six, first five uh, years of T21, three million net new construction jobs were created nationwide because of that program. We need the follow-on six-year program to do exactly the same thing, only more. We can create six million jobs with a $450 billion program compared to the $218 billion we had in T21, which was a big 40% increase over previous funding. Again, transportation investment creates jobs and permanent improvements benefit the lives of our fellow citizens and improve commerce and move goods more efficiently through our cities and from rural areas into urban centers. 
We'll hear more in detail from our upcoming witnesses. Mr. Duncan.